Midweek is back for 2021 and there's plenty of new rewards to collect. Let's do a recap and of course, a new reward showcase. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I'm back for another guide. The seasonal event, midweek, returned for another summer grill. It's live from August 17 to the 23rd, until next Monday, pretty much. And there are seven new rewards you can unlock with this new edition. I will start right there, but before, do let me inform you that I have a complete guide on Primal Cuts and Graham's Meat Cook events, so if you're not familiar with Meat Week at all, you might want to check it out. And I also have a guide with farming tips from last year, in case you need extra help. Nonetheless, I will be doing a recap and sharing a few more tips in this video. Well then, let's get started with the new stuff. Midweek is live for the first time in 2021, and this time Bethesda added 5 new rewards to the game files as data mined by Garrust. But hold on, because one of these entries comes with 3 new items, the duck decoy set, so in total there are 7 new rewards to unlock. Anyway, let's begin with the highlight, which is the new pepper shaker weapon. It's a heavy gun and shotgun at the same time, yes. Both weapon category perks work for this weapon, it's pretty insane. In other words, you can drastically boost base damage and intensify the crippling effect. Now, this weapon can be crafted as level 50 and turned into a legendary, as to be expected. There are also plenty of mods, which can be bought from faction vendors or regs in exchange for gold bullion, as per usual. Mods make a huge difference here, so make sure to get them. Because, as you can see, using the pepper shaker without proper modding and adequate perks, well, it's not a great idea. The weapon is really weak that way. What about pros and cons? Well, first of all, this weapon is a shotgun, so expect lots of damage at medium and close range, and very little damage plus lots of missing hits at long range. The pepper shaker also has a huge spread, I feel like it works wonders with VATS mode, but outside of it, not really. Unless you are fighting huge targets, like bosses, then the spread won't miss as much. But for regular farming, it's not a very good choice. First, because it eats bullets, literally, and secondly, because you are highly dependent on VATS. On the other hand, this weapon can deal a lot of damage. I was just using a two-shot level 35 here, and as you can see, it's killing pretty fast. I can only imagine a bloodied doing double damage, at least. Moreover, the pepper shaker is a crippling machine, and I really mean it. You can easily cripple enemies, even elites, like a deathclaw or a behemoth. I found myself crippling enemies all the time while testing, of course you need to equip the enforcer perk. Well, to conclude, this weapon is quite strong and it will surely make it to the endgame weapons list. It has its limitations, yes, but overall it's a very strong and reliable new entry. The second new reward you can get from Wheat Week in 2021 is the Grocery Cart Grill, a loyal wasteland skin for the cooking station with a very interesting animation. I mentioned this before and I will say it again, we really need more items like this one. You know, new creations using scrap and junk stuff. It's realistic, it's what people would do if resources were scarce. It's an immersion booster and it just makes sense. So bring it on, Bethesda, we are waiting. Next, we have three new decoy items part of the decoy duck set. Once you unlock this new plan, you will access three new duck figures under floor decor. They look like this. There's a brown duck, a dark green one, and a multicolored one as well. Ideal to fit rustic and wooden camps or to pair with the duck lamp, which we have already. To be honest with you, they are very versatile decor items, so use them as you please. Talking about decor, Bethesda finally added some fine kitchen decor. We now have access to this lovely plastic fruit bowl with a lot of detail. I mean, the fruits don't even look like plastic, they look quite realistic to me. There are some bananas, apples, plums and an orange inside the basket. I added mine on top of my wooden table, it fits like a glove, but as I said, I think this fits anywhere in your dining or kitchen area. 
The same can be said about the new plastic fruit reed, another awesome addition to decor items. In contrast with the fruit bowl, the reed features different fruits, such as pears and pomegranates. There are also pines and leaves to polish the reed concept. Well, that's it for the new rewards, but don't forget there are many other unique items you can get from Graham's Meat Cook. Feel free to check the full data mine sheet with the respective drop rates and everything. The link is right below the video. Now let's proceed to some farming tips and a recap of the events. Meat Week returned after almost a year and you may be wondering what changed? Well, nothing much. Primal Cuts and Graham's Meat Cook work the exact same way as always. No joke, only a few new rewards were added, as I already showed in the first point, and that's it. The rest is unchanged. Literally, everything is the same. Starting with the event spawns, Primal Cuts spawn 2-3 to three events per 15 minutes, starting at a fixed hour. So, 0 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 45 minutes. Then we have Graham's Meat Cook spawning every fixed hour, like 1pm, 2pm, 3pm, and so on. As for what you have to do and how to quickly complete the main event, well, it honestly depends on the server. I've been finishing my events in a couple of minutes, you don't have to do much when 20 players are there. But still, I will share some farming tips to ensure you get the most out of this summer event. Midweek is not just one event, it's a duo, and what some players don't really know is that you can get up to 15 script per grams meat cook. Mm -hmm. But for that you need Primal Meat, which is an exclusive reward from Primal Cut events. The amount you get from each event depends on the region. The best regions are the Mire and the Cranberry Bog with 5 Prime Meat per event, followed by the Savage Divide and the Ash Heap with 4 Primal Meat each. And lastly, the Forest and the Toxic Valley with only 3 Meat per completed event. Anyway, once you farm Primal Cuts, Make sure to deliver the meat to Graham at the main stage event. You might want to preserve the meat though if you farm a lot. You can use the good with salt perk under luck for example, or store it inside the fridge unit at your camp. Anyhow, you can deliver up to 15 prime meat in exchange for 15 script per cook event at the main cooking area as shown. So don't forget to do that, you also get a special effect for 15 minutes. The third and last stage gives you a 5% experience bonus with extra 30 HP. Pretty awesome, so make sure to deliver your meat everyone! I understand that the event spawns can be slightly confusing or bothersome to track, but in 2021 we have access to the World Activity Interface, which immediately shows all the active events whenever you open the map. This way you can easily track and join any active primal cuts or meat cook events, even when there is a huge cluster of players and you can hardly click on the events icon through the map. Same problem, just click on the world's feed and that's it. Simple, easy and fast. This feature didn't exist in past editions, so I remembered to share this useful tip. I hope it helps. Okay, now let's say you need to solo the event, whether because you're on your private server or because most players are AFK and not really playing or helping, what to do? How to finish the event as quickly as possible? Well, I shared this tip in past guides and it's my go-to strategy whenever I'm literally alone. I do a full circle around the event at first to collect all the greens, take out the trash and extinguish any active fires, also to clean the poo poo and whatever there is to do. Then I start to kill critters using a melee weapon. I use melee because it makes it easier to track and loot bodies, they also don't make the bodies explode or move too much from the killing point, like most ranged weapons do, then I collect dozens of critter chunks without delivering. I do this to avoid losing progress in time. If you keep delivering, let's say, 5 chunks at a time, you will lose way more time with so many deliveries and risk finishing without max rewards, and we don't want that. Instead, I deliver huge parcels, like 30 or 40 chunks at once, and that's normally enough to finish the event in one go. Of course, if your bar is too depleted already, don't let the event fail, deliver what you have already, but other than that, I recommend you to use the huge delivery strategy. Make the most out of your time and get better rewards. 
At every season start, you will do Graham's meat cook with many other players, so things go insanely fast. I've been completing my events under 2-3 minutes every time, which doesn't leave a lot of room to server jump, because every server is finishing at the speed of light. However, that's the hype of the first days in past editions, Players always lost interest quickly after the first couple of days or so, and then it's up to you and a few others to do the job. When that phase begins, it's time to server jump to find and complete several events per hour. The trick is to change servers as soon as you finish the first event, but please disregard your private server. The event there is gone after the first 2-3 minutes or so, unless someone stays there to keep it running. But there's more tricks here. Alright, so every time you log in or server jump at Graham's Meat Cook, you will be sent to the closest marked location, which is the Moonshiner's Shack. Whenever you change servers, things can take a while to fully load though, and since you are not spawning right at the event area, it can take even longer for the system to register you are there. If this happens, you can easily lose the rewards if the event is completed while you are still loading. The great news is that there are a few ways to counter this. Just place your survival tent around the event area to create your own personal spawn or use one of your camp slots to place a camp around it as well. A lot of people are doing this already, so you might often join servers with no space to place your buildings, but hey, it's still worth a shot, especially if you have followed first since you can easily move your tent around and it's free. If this trick triggers the next time you server jump, you will spawn literally at the event's range and if it doesn't, you can simply fast travel there, so it's very, very easy to enter the event's range and easily collect rewards. You are welcome, by the way. What about passively farming the meat cook event? I know it's difficult to farm all these new rewards, and we all have lives and stuff to do, but that doesn't mean you have to become a complete leech. That's right. If you have to go AFK or do something else, then please assume a passive role by playing the drums or grilling some meat. This way you can still contribute to the event's progression. It's not much, but it does make a difference, especially if we're talking about five or six players just standing there doing nothing, when they could be generating small amounts of progression. It only takes a few seconds to assume a passive role, plus you can make everyone happy that way. Think about it. Talking about passive roles, there's a small trick that not a lot of people know about. I read about it on Reddit yesterday and decided to test myself. Turns out it actually works. So if you play the drums or grill some meat right before the event starts, you can generate a small amount of contribution. It's not much, but if everyone does it, it surely makes a difference. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. In the upper footage, we had three players on the drums, and the lower footage, we had nobody. As you can see, the progress bar is not the exact same. There is a bit more on the passive footage. Anyway, this happens because there is a slight delay between the event updates, between the messages, and the system starts counting progress right after the countdown is over. So yes, you can use this trick for a slight head start every hour, just to let you know. Let's not forget about a brand new reward added to Meet Week in 2021, which are legendary cores. They did not exist during the past editions, so that's why they weren't rewarded. Now, Primal Cuts will never drop any of them, it would be too unbalanced, because, you know, dozens and dozens of events spawning per hour, it would be way too many cores. But the Grams Meat Cook drops 1 to 3 legendary cores per completed event, depending on your progression and the respective achieved tier. If you finish below 75%, you get no cores at all, there's zero chance, while at 100 progression, you have increased chances to get 2 or even 3 cores. So there you go, something else you might not be aware of because it's not very noticeable, it's not part of the event rewards list, the first part at least, but if you count them through your inventory, you will notice you are getting them. Why should you farm meat week? That's a question I often see on social media, and well, there's plenty of reasons, even after collecting all the new rewards. First of all, this event is like a farming paradise, you can farm almost everything valuable for endgame at the same time, such as treasury notes, 
lots of them actually if you consider primal cuts too you get two per event it's pretty nice then you can get extra 15 script and 60 caps per hour at the main event plus legendary items i know it's one star but still there's so many legendary cores and of course a huge list of exclusive rewards which by the way become more valuable over time since midweek only happens once or twice a year normally so you see it's not a waste of time to farm midweek is it now That's it for my midweek recap with some brand new farming tips and the new 7 rewards. I wish you good luck to get all the new stuff or the items you are still missing. Don't forget that you have only until next Monday, August 23, to take advantage of this seasonal event. My name is Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching and don't forget, a new double experience event is starting on August 19 as well. It's a week full of surprises. QuakeCon is happening soon as well, but let's leave that for another video, news time. Feel free to leave a like, comment below and all these things. As per usual, a huge thanks to all my dear supporters, you guys are the best and I will see you very very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!